Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of our Brown Bears Sports Report. I'm your host, Scott Credici. Glad that you could join us. Our Brown Bears Sports Report is brought to you in part by Bay Coast Bank, providing exceptional service and financial solutions for our community since 1851. Visit baycoast.bank to learn more. Well, as you can tell, we are at the Catherine Moran Coleman Aquatic Center here on the campus of Brown University. And right now, it gives us great pleasure to welcome to the start of our show some members of the women's swimming and diving team here at Brown University. First of all, to my right, we have head coach Kate Kovanak. Kate, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks, Scott. Well, thank you for joining us. Let me pull that mic up. We really want to hear what you have to say. I'm doing well. Thanks, okay. Scott. <laughs> it's great to see you. Uh, to my left, we have Audrey Lukowski, who is a senior on this year's team. Audrey, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for being with us. And to your left, we have freshman Jenna Reznicek. Jenna, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Well, thank you for all for being with us. Uh, Coach, I'll start with you. I know the season recently concluded with a fifth-place finish at uh, Ivy's. I guess just give me your thoughts on the season season passed as a whole and then you know finishing fifth at the Ivy Championships. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, coming in off of what was essentially an, an 18 month pause or an 18 months of pretty unpredictable training our focus coming into the season was really trying to build momentum. Uh, the goal being the second half of the season we wanted to be the most exciting the most fun and also to have the most emotional investment. Um, I'm really really proud of how our women competed at Ivy's uh, more so than the the fifth place finish we had the highest number and highest percentage of best times out of all the teams there, which is always a Great. stat that you're very proud to be able to, to say is your own. Um, and so I am, I'm really thrilled with the level of patience and persistence and resiliency that our women showed over the course of the year. I'm very proud of how our senior class mentored um, essentially two classes that had never done this before. True. Yeah. To Audrey, uh, you know, I don't know if you've had time to reflect yet on the season that's passed in your career that's now come to an end. But I guess just your thoughts on, on that's it. No more swimming here at Brown University. What was this whole four-year experience like for you? Oh, my gosh. It meant the world to me to be a part of this team. Um, being a part of BWSD has definitely been the most formative aspect of my time at Brown. You know, spending 20 hours a week, day in and day out, working together with the same girls for the same goal. Um, it was really, really special. And it's still not really sunk in that it's over quite yet. Um, I want to come back and, like, or help help Coach Kate yeah. um, out on days where we have some fun in the <laughs> spring. Um, so hopefully I'll still be around the full deck. So you say that, and I know that the Ivy League made an exception last year for kids that wanted to go to grad school at Brown. They could use that COVID year of eligibility Unfortunately, they're not allowing that this year, uh, this coming year, Coach? To my knowledge, they're not. I yeah. mean, we don't have anyone that has kind of an organic interest in doing that. Yeah. Um, so it's not quite as present in the front of my mind. Okay. Well, but, do you mind yeah. if I press? I, I don't. Yeah. If you don't want to answer this, don't answer it. But <laughs> So you might be back here next year in some capacity? Oh, no. I was referring to the spring when we have some practices. Like I got gotcha. you. I'm moving um, back to San Francisco um, to work at Salesforce next year. So no more school for now but maybe some master swimming or something so you already have a job i do that's awesome I'm congratulations excited. thank you well jenna uh I, I, all i can say about your freshman season was wow i i don't know what else to say how else to describe it but it seemed like every week i was reading jenna Reznicek <laughs> sets another record whether it's a personal best a program record whatever the case may be what a freshman season you had uh just talk to us a little bit about it. Did you expect to come here and have this type of success right away? Yeah, well, um, thank you so much. Um, actually, at the beginning, I, I remember I just wanted to get a personal best. I remember expressing my concern to Coach Kate that I wouldn't be able to improve in my 100 back. Um, so I was super stoked to be winning that event at the dual meets. Um, and that was kind of when I realized, okay, maybe I can heighten my goal to make the A final at Ivy's. Um, and then it wasn't until a month or two out of the meet that I realized, oh my gosh, I have a chance of actually winning this event. Um, yeah, I remember walking up to the podium. I was like, oh my gosh. I remember saying that out loud, actually, because I just didn't expect to be in that position at the beginning of the season. Um, but yeah, the only reason I was able to accomplish all those things was because of my teammates and, and the coaches, um, Coach Kate, Coach Nico, and Christina, um, like they are with all the swimmers, were so intentional about the race and how I swim it and the details. Um, like, for example, my stroke rate and my underwaters. Um, and my teammates just made practice so fun, <laughs> just so fun, which makes such a big difference. 
Um, and so, yeah, and their hard work, I just was so inspired by that. So they're the reason I was able to accomplish that this season. Kate, just talk about the season that, that she just had. I mean, an NCAA qualifier, an Ivy League champion. I mean, I talked about every time I read brownbears.com, it was her winning another race. Um, have you seen a season like that? I mean, that's, that's pretty rare to accomplish what she accomplished as a first-year student it's, athlete. It's a very fun first season. Um, everything that we saw that we've seen to date, her season's not over yet. That's right. <laughs> uh, everything that we've seen to date, I think the coaches uh, all saw in the making pretty early on. Mm -hmm. um, I do remember Jenna coming in and sitting down in my office and saying, you know, in one of our first meetings that I have with all the first years, all right, well, what are you nervous about? What are you concerned about? Well, I'm worried about whether or not I'm going to go best times. And fortunately, we were far enough into practices at that point in time that I could very calmly and confidently say, well, I'm not. Um, yeah. In part because she was very coachable, willing to work with people, um, and clearly just kind of enjoying the process. And when you let go of expectations, you kind of leave the door open for human performance, yeah. whether you know it or not. Um, and so it was really neat to see her kind of follow along. And, you know, Jenna likes to race. That's super helpful. Uh, for breakthrough seasons where you could just kind of give like, all right, here are the two, three things to think about in this race and go see what that does for you. Um, so it was, uh, I will say it was really nice for her to come in in January and sit down and say, okay, explain to me how you qualify for NCAAs um, because I wasn't sure if that was on her mind just yet. And so it was nice for her to bring that to the table as opposed to me having to introduce it to her. That's yeah. great. <laughs> uh, Audrey, you, you competed right away as, as a first-year student athlete yourself, and you were part of a school record-breaking 400-meter relay ta team. When you look back on your four years, are there any highlights, any races, any events that stand out, or any moments above the rest? Um, I think one of the most special ones was definitely my last race. It was the 200 breaststroke at Ivy's, and I made the A final, which I did my freshman year as well. So it was a very full circle moment, and it was really special to be able to sp stand on the podium and see all my teammates like cheering for me. It was really special. Do you prefer the individual races or the relays? I know sometimes there's something fun about being a part of a, a relay team. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think my favorite race is a 200 breast, but regardless of whether it's an individual race or a relay, I definitely feel that I have my whole team behind me. Um, even like at Ivy's standing behind the blocks, like I would see everybody on the other end of my lane and I knew that they had my back. Yeah. Um, relays are really special though too, because, um, just having the girls with you behind the blocks, it really helps eliminate some of those nerves and makes you excited to race. Um, and it was really special to be on a relay with Jenna too. I um, know. At Ivy's. Yeah. I was going to ask about that. <laughs> so let's talk about it. Uh, that, that relay that you two were on at Ivy championships. Yeah, I mean, I love relays. They're so much fun. Um, it's, as Audrey was saying, it's one thing to be behind the block and get yourself excited. Um, but when you have three other girls there with you and you can see your team just screaming at you, um, the environment, the atmosphere is just crazy. Um, and it's just, it's such a great feeling to be at the end of the season with these girls that you've been putting so much work in at practice with. Um, and just see that pay off and just have fun doing it. So Don't Audrey remember. brought up the fact, and this is a great point. I talked to so many Brown student athletes about this, you know, 20 hours a week. And then on top of that, you're a full-time student at an Ivy League school. So to me, time management has to be one of the biggest challenges, particularly as a first-year student athlete, right? Um, how have you dealt with that? Have you been able to manage your time well between classwork and athletics and, you know, all the while still having a little time for your social life, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, yeah, as you were saying, as a first year, I feel like a lot of first years can relate to the feeling of wanting to fully experience everything college has to offer at the beginning, um, whether that's your classes, social life, clubs, etc. cetera. Um, and I think for athletes, that's um, really prominent in their sport. You know, it's a whole new level of competing um, and, you know, kind of that feeling of wanting to pour yourself fully into the sport is um, really easy. So I definitely I definitely experienced that, but as time progressed, I learned to, you know, manage social life and classes and swimming all at the same time. Um, still a work in progress, but definitely, you know, I'm at the point where I'm getting more than five hours of sleep every night. So. <laughs> That's a good thing for a college student. I know how valuable sleep is for a college student. Yes. Audrey, um, tell me about the COVID year and not having a season. That had to be difficult for you. Probably the first time in your life that you didn't swim competitively since you were probably little, right? 
Yes. Um, since I was seven, the longest break I'd had since COVID was two weeks, um, like between seasons or our two week break after um, Ivy's. But COVID year was really difficult. Honestly, it was hard to see um, the light at the end of the tunnel. It was hard to have a goal when you didn't really know what the future held in terms of how the pandemic was unfolding. Mm -hmm. um, it was really helpful for me personally. I lived here in Providence with my teammates all in one house or my, the, the girls in my class all in one house. Um, so it was nice to still have that connection to the swim team and still have that as a sort of goal, like being close and working towards a common goal, whatever it was, just um, that was really nice. And also we were able to come swim towards um, like when, when the school year picked back up right. last year. Um, so that was helpful to sort of get reacquainted with the water yep. and put in work that we knew was going to pay off eventually. So, Kate, this is your eighth year mm -hmm. uh, with the program as head coach. So you recruited these two young ladies. I'm curious, on the recruiting trail, when you're trying to sell Brown and trying to sell your program, what are some of the things that you highlight on the recruiting trail? Sure. Uh, I think a lot of times the X, X factor for somebody really flourishing in college is that they first and foremost feel at home. Because um, when you feel at home and you feel comfortable and you feel understood, um, when somebody challenges you to be better on any given day, you take it as just that, a challenge. And also, um, you understand that the person who's challenging you to be better believes in your potential. Right. Um, if somebody doesn't really feel like they fit at, at the brown in the larger picture, then that challenge can be really threatening. So we start with some of the, the basic fundamentals, um, and a lot of it comes to academics. Um, Brown does things really, really differently with the open curriculum. Yep. Um, it is a significant difference between us and just about every other college and university in the country, um, and I think it is our strength. Yeah. Um, so we spent a lot of time talking about the layout of the open curriculum and, and uh, whether or not you know somebody connects with that is typically the first factor in figuring out whether or not you know, they are going to be a great fit for us and, and vice versa. Yeah. How about this facility behind us? I is mean, this a recruiting? I heard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this facility opened in 2012. So yep. I had the benefit when I, when I got here in the fall of 2014. It was already here and it was brand new. Right. Um, and it still feels brand new. It's fantastic. I mean, it does have that nice shine factor. When you get somebody on campus, you don't have to worry about, oh, dear, when are we going to show yep. them the pool? It's like. This is our pool. Right. Um, but on a practical level, it's incredibly helpful from a development standpoint. We have the room that we need. We have the lanes that we need. Um, we can share the pool with our men's program at the same time, and everybody gets what they, you know, what they need on that given day. Um, and then if we have people who stay and train voluntarily in the summer, we can set up for long course, uh, and you can actually see kind of that, that four-year progression. Um, so it is... Uh, it is a, a wonderful thing to show somebody there is that wow factor, yeah. um, but the value is more so when we're in motion. We just have, we have the resources and the sure. water that we need. So San Francisco, California, Boulder, Colorado, correct? Yes. All right, so tell me, I mean, look, I think this is a great facility. Uh, she talked about the open curriculum, which I think is a great selling point for Brown University. It's a beautiful campus. I think Providence, Rhode Island is a beautiful town. Um, what drew the two of you to Brown? We'll start with you, Audrey. Um, Truthfully, when I came on my recruiting trip, I wasn't 100% sold on Brown. Okay. But after spending three days here with the team, I knew that it just felt right. Like the team was what I wanted because everyone was so unique and brought so many um, great individual aspects to the table. But somehow they all m meshed super well and got along together really well. And that was an environment that I knew that I wanted to be a part of. Um, so that was a great selling point. And also, I really wanted to try something new. I'm San Francisco born and raised. Yep. Never been on the East Coast for more than like three days before. Um, so I've loved this little journey <laughs> to um, actual seasons. But I also think I'm ready for some warmer weather. And now you love these New England winters, don't you? <laughs> All right. Maybe not. <laughs> Audrey will be visiting us in the yeah. spring for <laughs> campus dance uh, after graduation. <laughs> good point. Yeah. Good point. Jenna, same question to you. Uh, what drew you to Brown? And, and I think Audrey brings up a great point, right? It could be the coaches that you connect with. In her case, it was the teammates. When she was on campus for three days, she just kind of fell in love with 
kind of the family feel or environment of this team, uh, the open curriculum, the facility? What drew you to Brown? I mean, yeah, all of the above, the open curriculum, the the um, the pool, the facility. Um, but I actually committed here sight unseen because of the weird COVID year. Yeah. Um, so I was doing virtual calls with some of the teammates, um, and their excitement for Brown was just so contagious, um, and that got really me really excited. Um, and and on my calls with Coach Kate, what really stood out about my calls with her and my calls with other coaches was that she really cared how I was doing as a person first and foremost. Um, a lot of the other coaches would be like, okay, when's your next meet? How much are you training? Blah, blah, blah. Kate, I remember so distinctively, she said, Jenna, how are you doing? And it was like in such a genuine way. Um, I really remembered that. But yeah, also, I, I mean, from Boulder, Colorado, it's very different from um, the East Coast. And so I also wanted to try something new. Um, yeah. Definitely had to bring my bigger coat, but <laughs> no, no beaches in Boulder, Car no Colorado. Beaches. No, but got some, some reservoirs. Right, beautiful mountains and, yeah. <laughs> and beautiful country out there. I love Colorado. I've been there. Um, so, uh, quick question: You, as we record this show, are now preparing for NCAA's down in Atlanta. What's that preparation like, and how, if at all, does it differ from you, you know, preparing for a dual meet in season, for instance, or is it pretty much the same? I mean, the training is pretty similar, um, but I have been training by myself for the most part. I have some teammates training with me just to stay in shape. Um, but, um, yeah, Coach Kate still keeps it fun. <laughs> I'm enjoying it, and I'm, I'm really excited for that meet. It's a fast meet. Um, it'll just be a really cool experience, and I'm so thankful to get to go um, and, most importantly, represent Bruno. So we wanted to have Hope Street Pizza and Wings here for you ladies today, but she said, no, not while she's training for NCAAs, but when the season's over with, I'll take you up on the pizza and wings. Jenna, Friday night, pizza and wings <laughs> in Atlanta. So there you go. I didn't think it would be great right before a 3 p.m. practice. <laughs> so, Kate, uh, just a, a quick uh, thing about Jenna. Obviously, the first uh, brown women swimmer to qualify for NCAAs, did you tell me in 18 years? Is yeah, that right? 2004 is uh, the last time that Brown University wow. was represented on the women's side so that's pretty wow. special yeah absolutely yeah. i was in college and i think jenna you're in diapers <laughs> <laughs> we broke a good streak there yeah <laughs> so will you be going down to atlanta with jenna I absolutely yeah. yeah yeah so uh jenna will be traveling with me and also uh, nico fantakis who's our assistant coach um having gone to an ncaa championship as a, a sole swimmer myself when i was an athlete uh it's always nice to have a little bit of a crowd with you even sure. if you can't mm -hmm. have teammates sure so, yeah. will you have family come out to that yeah my dad will be there my mom's in rome okay. but my dad will be there yeah. that's that's great audrey what was your concentration or what is your concentration here at brown i'm an economics major economics and what did you say your job will be I'm going to be working at salesforce i'm really excited to learn more about the business side of technology so yeah, I'm and, looking forward to and it. And in your hometown of San Francisco? Yes. Good yeah. for you. Um, just, I, I guess, wrapping things up, I want the floor to be yours. I mean, you, you know, you just talk about, you know, what this whole experience has meant to you. I know we kind of started the interview in, in the same manner, but, you know, it's unfortunately coming to an end, but all good things must come to an end, right? But then you start the next true. chapter of your life. Um, yeah. What's it meant to you? Um. I can't imagine or I can't remember a time in my life in which I wasn't swimming. I've been swimming since I was four and competitively since I was six. So really these past couple of weeks have felt really different with much more time in my schedule. But also um, I do miss that everyday dedication to something that is bigger than yourself, especially being at Brown. Being a part of this team has been honestly just the best experience of my life like um, getting to work with like-minded women every single day and do it for each other for something bigger than yourself um, it's been really special and being a part of this team I wouldn't have traded for anything in the world that's awesome all right favorite spot on campus uh, probably the the lounge in the campus center that overlooks the main green okay how about on Thayer Street go-to spot on Thayer Street? Mm, I would say hang, but that's a cop-out because it's actually on Angel Street. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. <laughs> Who's the uh, craziest person or funniest person on your team? Oh, I would say probably Audrey Orange, but this year it's been really fun getting to watch Audrey and Evie Crawl mm. interact in the <laughs> locker room. I feel like no one can ever breathe because we're all <laughs> laughing too hard. It's so yeah. funny. 
Well, congratulations on, on a great four-year career Thank here you at Brown. Very much. I know I speak for Coach and I say you've represented this program and the athletic department and the university so well. We wish you the best of luck and certainly look forward to seeing you back here on campus Thank as well. Thank you so much. So I'll definitely be back. Very proud of you, Good Audrey. luck in the NCAAs. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. That's Jenna Reznicek, Audrey Lukowski, and head coach Kate Kovanak with us from the Brown Women's Swimming and Diving Team. We'll take a break. When we come back, the men's swimming and diving team will join us when we continue with the Brown Bears Sports Report right after this. The British, they're here! Sir, this is our Bacos Bank interactive teller machine, not the British. With our local ITM personal bankers, you can cash checks, make loan payments, and deposit or withdraw funds with extended hours beyond regular branch hours. Genius! Thank you! I would like to make a withdrawal. Great! How much? Twelve shillings, please. Elite Physical Therapy is a proud partner of Brown Bears Athletics. Achieving elite levels of performance is a pursuit held by all athletes. So we wanted to know how members of Brown's coaching staff defined elite. Elite means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but I would say it's somebody who's pursuing their potential to the absolute ends. Um, and so, you know, for some people that might mean, you know, the Olympic Games and pursuing medals. And for other people that might mean trying to get onto the roster um, to travel to HEPs um, in our Ivy League championship uh, and to score a point for the team by the time they're a senior. So everybody's potential lies in a different place, but if you're truly pursuing your potential to the absolute end, um, then, then that's, that's what being elite is to me. Now taking off, Breeze Airways with nice, new, and non-stop flights to Pittsburgh, Charleston, and Norfolk only on Breeze Airways. Doctors at University Orthopedics have been caring for the people of southeastern New England for more than 40 years. With the Warren Alpert Medical School of Brown University, we train the next generation of orthopedic surgeons. Our state-of-the-art facilities stretch from Westerly to Mansfield. At our East Bay Surgery Center, we've performed thousands of surgeries, including same-day total joint replacements. We've grown through the years, but our goal has always been getting you back to doing what you love to do. The best orthopedic care anywhere is right here. University Orthopedics. From corporate events to weddings by the bay to private celebrations, the Pronzi name means elegance, personalized service, and exacting attention to detail. Pronzi has everything you need in one place. Event planning, catering, tents, tables and chairs, decor, and so much more. Call Pronzi today and let them plan your next event. Why go anywhere else? The British! They're here! Sir, this is our Bacos Bank interactive teller machine, not the British. With our local ITM personal bankers, you can cash checks, make loan payments, and deposit or withdraw funds with extended hours beyond regular branch hours. Genius! Thank you! I would like to make a withdrawal. Great! How much? Twelve shillings, please. Doctors at University Orthopedics have been caring for the people of southeastern New England for more than 40 years. With the Warren Alpert Medical School of Brown University, we train the next generation of orthopedic surgeons. Our state-of-the-art facilities stretch from Westerly to Mansfield. At our East Bay Surgery Center, we've performed thousands of surgeries, including same-day total joint replacements. We've grown through the years, but our goal has always been getting you back to doing what you love to do. The best orthopedic care anywhere is right here. University Orthopedics. From corporate events to weddings by the bay to private celebrations, the Pronzi name means elegance, personalized service, and exacting attention to detail. Pronzi has everything you need in one place. Event planning, catering, tents, tables and chairs, decor, and so much more. Call Pronzi today and let them plan your next event. Why go anywhere else? Welcome back to the Brown Bears Sports Report here on AM790 WPRV and on Facebook Live. And this segment of the show brought to you by the Brown University Sports Foundation. Through your donations and the work of our volunteers, the Brown Sports Foundation is committed to providing funding and support to Brown athletics that enhance the student-athlete experience. We thank you for your generosity and service to Brown athletics. So right now, it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the program 
our men's swimming and diving team, or at least some members of it. First off, to my immediate right, we have head coach Kevin Norman. Kevin, how are you? Scott, thanks for having us. Well, thank you for being with us. And to my left, we have senior Ben Hayes. Ben, how you doing? Good. Incredibly excited to be here. Well, thank you for being with us. And to his left, we have freshman Jack Kelly. Jack, how are you? Doing great. Thanks excited for stopping by. Well. Appreciate it. Well. Kevin, the season uh, recently concluded with a fourth-place finish at the Ivies. I guess just give me your thoughts on, on the season past. Tremendous season. Um, even though I think we, um, place-wise, we were, we were the same as we were in 2020, I think the, the way we competed, the way we trained was um, a huge step forward from, from last year. I thought, you know, from day one, the guys bought into understanding what it was going to take to continue to move forward. Um, I thought the, the senior leadership – was tremendous, and I thought that the uh, underclassmen, a lot of guys that have never swum, you know, in a in a race for for Brown, uh, stepped in immediately and uh, contributed to what we were trying to do here. Ben, you broke your own school record in the individual medley at the uh, Ivies. Uh, what was that experience like for you? It was it was a lot of fun. Um, I think it was kind of a, a breakout swim I was looking to have. I, I knew that, um, you know, that that time I set sophomore year was definitely one I can prove upon and. Uh, in the morning, just had a great swim, felt unreal in the water, had the guys behind me, and, yeah, put it all together. And, Jack, uh, you did the same. You bested your own school mark in the 100 breaststroke at the Ivy, so that had to be kind of cool for you. Yeah, it was great, uh, especially since uh, I got COVID around late December, right after my midseason. Wow. And I got back into the water, trained with some distance, and hit it back again, and I was really excited to see a drop. So tell me, how, how did that go? First of all, how bad did you get it? And then what was the recovery process like for you? How long before you were back to somewhere close to normal? Yeah, so uh, I didn't get any symptoms, so, but I had to take a test to go back on campus, but yep. it was positive. Uh, it took around 10 days of being out of the water, and then I had to do a process of return to play where I'd come back, uh, do some aerobic sets for like 30 minutes until I felt better for a full practice. So I'd well, probably say anywhere from like 10 to 15 days. I'm glad to hear you weren't symptomatic. Uh, ben, you know, speaking of COVID, you guys had a whole season wiped out like the, all, the, the entire Ivy League did for every sport uh, due to COVID. So as a senior, had to be nice for you to get back into the pool for your final year. Yeah, it was uh, beyond nice to get back in the water with these guys. Um, I think personally, that break, like I was out of the water for like – two or three months stretch um and was able to get back into the water but like for me personally that time out of the water gave me a whole new perspective on um you know being a part of the team and athletics in general and basically a, a whole new look on swimming and, and basically like refreshed my motivation and stuff to get back in the water so by the time we all get back on campus and i say that for myself but i think it did that for a lot of people as well so sure. getting everyone back on campus it was insane the energy like everyone wanted to put their best foot forward, and, and it was a great year. Kevin, what was it like coaching a team where half of it, two new classes, your freshmen and sophomores, had never competed in a collegiate event? We were learning a lot from people throughout the year. Um, you know, it was two full, as you mentioned, it was two full classes that were new to us. The nice thing was, you know, our, we had our sophomores here this summer taking classes. As you know, you know, their college career didn't start until January. Right. So everything kind of got pushed back for them, which I think was disappointing news initially. But the nice thing is, you know, Matt and I really got to make up for missed time and work with them throughout the summer. Uh, pretty much every morning they were here training before they went off to class. They were in the weight room with Coach Paiva. So I feel like by the time of their sophomore year, it, it didn't feel as new. Maybe competing felt new. But the nice thing in, in terms of the meets, our seniors were so good for us this year. They competed at such a high level. They took a lot of pressure off of our, off our new swimmers. So, Ben, you're a senior, so I can get an honest opinion from you on this one. Mm -hmm. What's it like swimming for this guy, oh. the Ivy League Coach of the Year? It never, a, a true statement has never been said, Ivy League Coach of the Year. It, it was awesome. Norman, obviously, in, the, in his two, three seasons, two active seasons, came in and, and really turned this program around and, I would say, rejuvenated it. But it's like every day, Matt and, and Kevin coming in, it, it's unlike any coaches I've had. Jack, as a freshman, you come in and make a huge impact on the program right away. I don't know what your expectations were coming out of high school and, you know, coming to college and swimming at the Division One level, but did you think that you would be able to have the type of impact you would in the pool immediately? I definitely wanted to have an impact on the team coming in, but uh, I think the training Kevin and Matt gave me and just the energy they provided really just shot my career forward. I didn't really expect these huge drops in 
other events as well, the two breasts and the two IM, I was always a 100 breast choker. And to see uh, my two breasts become my better event was just something awesome to see. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, Kevin, you know, talk about the season he had as a freshman. Now, it's not a lot, <laughs> not often that a first year student athlete can come in and have that type of impact right away. I mean, we knew how talented Jack was walking in the door, but, it, you know, the biggest challenge, it was exciting when you get, you know, a recruit of that caliber. But the biggest challenge is, okay, now how, you know, where do you go from here? How do right. you continue to develop them? And I think that, you know, Matt and I, in a way, got ourselves a lot of credibility in that, you know, we got a recruit that was so highly ranked and was so talented walking in the door, walking with times already faster than school records, and we made them that much faster. Right. But I will say someone like Jack, um, you know, his talent level is one thing, but, you know, character and work ethic are at a whole other level. Um, he's a kid that will do anything, you know, you ask him to do. As, yeah. as he mentioned, he had COVID earlier in the year. And uh, just to get his volume back up, we moved him over to the distance group um, for about 10 days. You know, most people don't, you know, enjoy walking over to that group just because it's more volume, it's more yards than they're used to. And right. he went over there, got his volume up, and as soon as we were ready to move him back down to some shorter, faster work, he went ahead and did that. Just always willing to adapt. Um, and the other thing about him is the, the bread of the lights, the faster he's going to go. And that's where, you know, we really saw Jack come out in that big homie against Yale as a team that we hadn't beaten in 20 years. And we saw a whole other level of, of Jack Kelly. Um, and then obviously with Ivy, he's going even faster. Um, it just shows, you know, the sky's the limit for him. And speaking of talent, a lot of people don't know Ben has some talents himself beyond swimming and in the classroom. You're a pretty good guy with video and Adobe and all that stuff, and you've done some stuff for other programs here at Brown Football Lacrosse. I know, you know, the athletic communications department where I work is starting to take advantage of your skills as well. Is that just a, is that just a hobby of yours, something that you've always enjoyed doing? It's, it's quickly turning to something that's not a hobby anymore, which is really exciting yeah. um, and definitely a viable career path for me after school. And, um, you know, obviously I'm very fortunate to have a lot of these coaches in, in the athletics department reaching out to me to, to have me do more work. Um, it's always just been like I'm a pretty creative person, and that's been a creative outlet for myself. And, uh, you know, to be able to do that and, and make some money and, like I said, potentially make a career out of it is, is really exciting are you strictly more on the video side or do you take stills as well yeah I mean, so i have pretty much always been mostly video but more and more as i'm working with teams and and obviously a lot of social media is is picture based as well yep. um so I, i've had to kind of explore that photography area which is which is really fun um you know i like pushing that new skill set so i'm not sure if you're familiar with a guy by the name of rob rainey but rob played football here at brown mm -hmm. and he name. has his own company and, and he does a lot of work for brown and the brown sports foundation pr pr you know producing cool videos and things of that nature and you know that's a guy that you should get in touch with if this is a career that you want to pursue i mean he's that's what he does for a living and uh, you could probably have a lot of fun doing it because I can tell it's a passion of yours. Absolutely. I, I've actually seen his work for it. Very cool. Um, definitely inspired some of my water polo stuff when I s first started working with Felix on the water polo team. Um, and, yeah, he obviously very incredible um, or successful freelance. What did you concentrate or what are you concentrating in here, Brown? Computer science and economics. Okay. And so do you have plans for after graduation? Um, Juggling a few things right now, and uh, you know, over the next few weeks, I'm hoping to decide. Um, I'm going to be taking a few trips to out the West Coast, um, LA area, and then um, there's a company I really like where I'd be a, a creative producer down in Virginia, which would be really exciting. Jack, how about you? Um, what uh, you don't have to decide on the concentration until sophomore year, but have you given thought to what you'd like to concentrate in? Yeah. So first semester, I took some STEM classes, some in econ, uh, some in engineering. I really liked engineering, so. I I'm continuing the track. I'm also taking some CS classes just to see what I like. So now, Ben, you said you're looking out in California. You're a Wisconsin guy, right? Wisconsin through high school, and then my freshman year, my family actually moved out to the Bay. Oh, is that right? Yep. So I, I've been in the, the Bay Area for about three years now. And, Jack, you're from Yonkers, New York? Yeah. I'm from Does that Yonkers, mean you're a Yankees fan? I mean, you're right up the road from Yankee Stadium, right? Yeah. I actually went to uh, Fordham in the Bronx, so – I'm a diehard Yankee fan. Okay, so Chuck Hampton, who's watching the show on the other side of the camera, huge Yankees fan. He's from New Jersey. That's awesome. That's I don't it. I don't hold it against either one of you that you're Yankee fans. Now, you're a Connecticut guy. I'm a huge Yankees so fan. That you was are? Actually, uh, oh, no. It's a I, huge selling point. I might point have to get up from this table. For, for Jack. Yeah. I'm can't, surrounded. Can't talk with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> who's your favorite baseball team, uh, if you have one? From Milwaukee. Um, okay. And, well, actually, originally I was born in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, so Reds number one and then kind of the Brewers after that. So you joined me on the podcast this past week. I'm going to ask you a question I asked you there, and that is, 
When you're recruiting and you're looking for gentlemen like these two that are going to just make a huge impact for your program, what, what are the qualities you're looking for in recruits, number one, and how are you selling Brown and Brown swimming, number two? Well, first, I mean, first and foremost, we look at character and progression. Um, we want to bring people in that are, that are good people, that are fun to be around and have great work ethics. Um, we have a very specific program here, and Brown's a very specific school. And so the people that seem the most excited about you know, our training program, what we're doing, how much we're improving, how we're developing people, and also how we're challenging them from day to day are the people that we want to bring in. And there's a lot to sell here. Um, you so know, I, I try not to say we're, we're selling it. I, I think I'd look at it more as providing as much information as we can. Um, you know, this is our team's philosophy. This is our training program. This is the open curriculum. Um, there's a lot to, to draw some talented kids, you know, to Brown. Um, there's a facility right behind us, too. It's pretty good. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's a lot here. There's, yep. a, there's a lot to um, – we're going to attract some, some great kids, and the, and the faster that – we're swimming, and the better we're, we're, we're competing, I think the, the higher level of recruit that we're going to be able to bring in here. All right, Ben, what are you going to miss the most about your four years here at Brown? Definitely the team. Like, the team is next to none. Obviously, these are my best friends. Um, we've got 35 guys on the team, and I think it's – obviously, I can't speak to other programs, but I can confidently say that every single one of these guys on the team is my best friend. I could sit down with any single one of them and talk for hours. Um, it's not like there's one person I'm uncomfortable with. It's, it's truly a, a brotherhood, I guess, as cliche as that sounds. But, yeah, it, it's a family here. Jack, how have you managed this your first year here at Brown with your time management? Um, you know, juggling academics, athletics. I mean, you know, being a, a, a member of a varsity program is like having a full-time job in addition to being a full-time student. Has it been easy, difficult for you or what? Uh, the first semester was a little difficult. The first two weeks were very hard. Though, you know, once I got into a groove routine, um, you just get into it. And, you know, s smooth sailing after that, to be honest. That's great. I'm going to give you, Coach, the final word. Ben, just talk to us a little bit about him, what he's meant to the program. You know, I think one of my favorite things about coaching is just seeing how much people develop and grow over a span of four years. And I could tell, you know, I started coaching Ben his sophomore year. And, and the amount he has grown as an athlete and as a leader and as a student athlete is unbelievable. Um, he stepped up this year in the leadership role he took on, you know, leading by example. Every day he comes in and he's one of the hardest workers in the pool, if not the hardest worker. Yep. He's also become one of the most vocal kids on the team. Um, and then obviously from, from day to day, people feed off that enthusiasm. I think you know, Jack would probably say that, you know, Ben's one of the people that he's chasing through practice and one of the people he looks up to. And I think you have a full army of freshmen and sophomores that say the same thing about Ben. He is just someone that we can lean on in, in so many different ways. Um, very sad to see him go, but I'm also excited to see what he's going to do beyond Brown. Um, his work ethic and his talent level is extraordinary. Well, wherever your future travels take you, I hope you'll come back and at least do a pump-up video oh, for the program. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> right? Better. I will be back here plenty of times. Good luck. Thanks Thank so you. much for your that. four years, and uh, thanks for joining us Thank on the you. show. All right, folks, uh, that is the men's swimming and diving program here on the Brown Bears Sports Report. My thanks to head coach uh, Kevin Norman, Ben Hayes, and Jack Kelly for being with us. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, our women's water polo team will join us, and we continue with the Brown Bears Sports Report right after this. The British! They're here! Sir, this is our Baycoast Bank interactive teller machine, not the British. With our local ITM personal bankers, you can cash checks, make loan payments, and deposit or withdraw funds with extended hours beyond regular branch hours. Genius! Thank you! I would like to make a withdrawal. Great! How much? Twelve shillings, please. My name is Mick Young Mobilia. I'm a breast cancer survivor. I just knew that something wasn't right. So I ended up calling Rhode Island Medical Imaging and they gave me an appointment right away. They were able to fit me right in. And that's where I, they found out that I had breast cancer. It's a miracle that they found it. Whoever the radiologist is, um, they basically saved my life. Had they not found it, it could have gotten a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse the following year because I have invasive ductal carcinoma and I already had one lymph node involvement. I, I couldn't even say the word breast cancer. 
So the fact that Remy can provide a place where when you walk in, when you're so scared that you don't know where your life is going and you walk in there, just the environment itself, you can relax. I'm glad that they look at every film individually. It's more than just a film that they're looking at, that they see a human behind it. Hi, Hi. How are you? Dr. Hillstrom, nice, nice to meet you. you. Well, thank, thank you for coming. Thank you. thank you so much. You're welcome. You can have all the money in the world, but you know what? Breast cancer doesn't see that. So for me, it's to enjoy every day of your life. My name is Mick Young Mobilia, and I am the luckiest girl on this earth. Now taking off, Breeze Airways with nice, new, and non-stop flights to Pittsburgh, Charleston, and Norfolk. Only on Breeze Airways. Doctors at University Orthopedics have been caring for the people of southeastern New England for more than 40 years. With the Warren Alpert Medical School of Brown University, we train the next generation of orthopedic surgeons. Our state-of-the-art facilities stretch from Westerly to Mansfield. At our East Bay Surgery Center, we've performed thousands of surgeries, including same-day total joint replacements. We've grown through the years, but our goal has always been getting you back to doing what you love to do. The best orthopedic care anywhere is right here. University Orthopedics. From corporate events to weddings by the bay to private celebrations, the Pronzi name means elegance, personalized service, and exacting attention to detail. Pronzi has everything you need in one place. Event planning, catering, tents, tables and chairs, decor, and so much more. Call Pronzi today and let them plan your next event. Why go anywhere else? The British! They're here! Sir, this is our Bacos Bank interactive teller machine, not the British. With our local ITM personal bankers, you can cash checks, make loan payments, and deposit or withdraw funds with extended hours beyond regular branch hours. Genius! Thank you! I would like to make a withdrawal. Great! How much? Twelve shillings, please. Welcome back to the Brown Bears Sports Report here on AM790 WPRV and on Facebook Live. Our final segment of the program brought to you by Ticket Smarter. Nothing beats the power and excitement of live events like Ticket Smarter. For all the best sports, concerts, and theater events, visit TicketSmarter.com or on the app Ticket Smarter. Proud to be the official ticket resale marketplace at Brown Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. And right now it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the program some members of our women's water polo team here at Brown University sitting to my right right we have senior Dagmara Chaika did I pronounce that right Dagmara yeah Chaika Chaika okay I apologize no it's okay well thank you for being with us thank you for having me all right and to my immediate left we have senior goalkeeper Marley uh, is it Preciado it is that's all correct. right I got that right yeah. thank you and to your left our far left Katie Klein senior attacker Katie how are you I'm good how are you I'm doing great well thank mm -hmm. you all for being with us um, as we record this show you all are a little bit what, a little bit more than midway through the season, right? Uh, Dagmar, I'll start with you. I mean, how have things gone from your perspective? I know as we record this again, you guys had a nice win over a ranked Harvard team on the road last weekend. But overall, how would you describe the season? I think we are really doing well and are being very competitive within our conference. And on top of that, uh, ranked teams that are even higher abo uh, above us. I just think that as the season progresses, we're just going to keep getting better and better and really show up for championships. So, Marley, I would imagine it just has to be nice to be back in the pool having a season again, right? Yes. I mean, because you lost an entire year due to COVID and really half a season the year before due to COVID, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, it's definitely nice to be back in the pool and kind of just have, like, one last senior season. Um, and I think everyone is excited, and you can tell, I think, in the way we've been playing that people are just really happy to be back at it. Katie, how about you? Again, nice to be back in the pool. Yes, it's definitely nice. Reiterating what Marley said, just one last season to top it off. You know, I, I look at your careers, and I'll, I'll go back to you again, Katie. As, as a first-year student athlete for the program, if I'm not mistaken, you led the team in scoring, did you not? I think I did. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's not easy coming in as a freshman and leading the team. So 
obviously it wasn't much of an adjustment from you uh, going from high school to college. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was really, I was really excited to join the program, be coached by Felix. Um, I think our program's super special. We push each other, and it, I think our freshman season was a lot of fun in that aspect. You know, Marley, you all played as first-year student-athletes in this program, and for you, I think right now your best save percentage uh, of all three years that you've competed for the is program. Is that true? Correct? That is true. Oh, I looked good that to up. know. Thank you. <laughs> so getting better every year, is that what it's all yeah, about? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I've been a little, I'm probably not supposed to say this, surprised at how I've been doing this season, just given that we've had basically two years off. But um, that's exciting to hear. Just get better with age I guess. <laughs> Dagmara eight goals four assists uh, 13 steals um, how would you describe you know your season individually today? Um, I think it's really interesting I've taken a different a role on the team I'm now more defensive um, player than I was my freshman year I was more of an attacker then. Second uh, on the team in scoring I think. Your yeah. <laughs> yeah Katie and I hold down yeah. the board <laughs> um, but it's I really like defense and I like kind of being the communicator the quarterback of our team and I think it's really fit into our leadership as also seniors. So what led to that change? Um, <laughs> Felix said that I'm now one of like the bigger stronger bodies in comparison we lost a lot of girls my freshman year who had the height and the length and I became one of the taller bigger girls who could fill that position and I'm also very defensive minded so I think it fit really well. Marley I've always wanted to ask this question of a goalkeeper how do you play that position you're pretty much on an island by yourself right you're exposed Uh, is there how do you anticipate, I guess, what an opponent's going to do? Are they going to shoot high? Are they going to shoot low to your left, to your right? Is there some guessing involved, or what's the strategy of a goalkeeper? Yeah, so, I mean, in a lot of ways, being a goalie is, like, pretty individual. But, like, honestly, I couldn't do it without my defense. And a lot of being antici- being able to anticipate what shot is coming is directed by the defense and the shot block. Um, they're always trying to funnel shots just to me so I don't have to move as much because um, that's an easier block. And honestly, probably my save percentage this year is in large part due to, like, the amazing shot blockers we've had this season, Dag being one of the best. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, to follow that up, um, do you – is there something you do to try to read your opponents in terms of their intentions when they – are about to shoot on goal? Um, yeah, there are some things I can do. A lot of it has to do with their position in the pool. So if they're a little bit farther away from the cage, um, it might be more of an off-speed shot. If they have a bad angle, it's probably going to be a lob because um, it's hard to hit like a really strong shot from a bad angle, which would be like by the sides of the cage. Right. Um, and otherwise, it's mostly reaction time. We're not really supposed to guess. Um, I still do on occasion, but um, I do my best. Katie, uh, Coach Mercado, instead of coming on with a couple of you today, said let's have all three student athletes on. You don't need me on the show. What's it like playing for Felix? Um, I love playing for Felix. I've had a lot of coaches uh, throughout my career, and Felix definitely is one of my favorites. I feel like he really embodies, like, more of, like, a father figure and he's like there for us a lot um I also really like how he runs our team and more of like a team offense team defense um really makes you feel like you're a part of something and makes us all work together and work better together so I feel like we should strike up Katy Perry's California girls because we have three California girls on the show (laughs) right now one from the San Francisco area one from the LA area one from the San Diego area uh let's start with you how did you wind up here at Brown University um, well, Felix actually came to one of uh, my club showcases. We kind of have a showcase for a lot of coaches, and Felix saw me at that, and he was telling me he should that I should come talk to him, and I did, and we've had the relationship ever since. He came watch me play, and I came to campus, fell in love, and it's history ever since. And you're from the San Diego area, correct? Yes. Now, how about you? You are from the uh, south of L.A., Newport yeah, Beach? Yeah, I'm from Orange County, which is, yeah, just okay, south of so L.A. so just south of L.A. Same question to you. How'd you wind up here at Brown? Did you have choices, and what made this the right stop um, for you? So Felix reached out to me when um, – like, what is it, September of your junior year, they're allowed to start reaching yep. out. Um, and so I was talking to him um, and, like, a few others, but really what it came down to was Brown had kind of, like, the best combination for me of, like, a school that I was looking for academically um, with also a water polo schedule that's not so time-consuming because I still did want to be able to have, um, like, a balance between my schoolwork, my social life, 
water polo, um, and it kind of just had the perfect mix. I think if I read on your bio, too, the open curriculum was a big draw yes, for you. Yes, yes, huge. Yeah. So how about you? You're from just west of Oakland mm -hmm. in San Francisco, right? Mm -hmm. How'd you wind up here? Um, well, my sister actually played at Princeton, so very in the know about like, East Coast water polo, and yep. similar to Marley and Dag, um, I was really looking for that balance of academics, but didn't really want to follow my sister exactly because constantly was following her footsteps so that's how I found myself up well around. I know I know you're from a family of athletes athletes right your mom played golf at Stanford your dad football at UC Davis and your brother and sister mm -hmm. are they athletes too yes my yep. brother played golf at Davis and oh. my sister played water polo at Princeton okay. so we always played a lot of sports so it was just kind of in the plan to always play sports in college so now again as we record this show in a week or two you guys will be on break but it's not a break for you but you'll be heading back to California mm -hmm. to play a lot of matches. Are you excited to go back to California? I'm personally very excited. It is getting nicer weather here, but I don't think anything beats the California weather. Yeah, I agree. I'm definitely excited. Um, most of our team is from random parts of California all over. Um, so it's really nice um, for us. Like if we're not going to be able to have like a spring break, where we like are vacationing. Um, I think it's nice for all of us to be able to go home, see our families, still get a little bit of like that beautiful weather and, you know, just relax like a tiny bit. Yeah, play in front of family and friends, right? Yeah, they, I mean, they covered everything I wanted to say, but echoing the fact that our family gets to come down, watch us live and instead of having to travel so much. So it's really nice to see them in our off time. So what are you all concentrating in? I'll start with you. Um, I'm a double concentrator in economics and history. And do you have something lined up for after graduation already? Yes, I plan to move to New York. And you have a job? Mm -hmm. I'm working at Adobe in the business development side. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. How about you? What's your concentration? Um, I'm concentrating in social analysis and research, which is kind of a unique brown concentration within the sociology department. It's just a little bit more um, analytical and a little bit heavier on social statistics rather than like social theory. And do you have plans for after graduation? I don't have anything lined up at the moment. Um, I would ideally like to go into policy research um, and then in a few years probably try law school. Okay. How about you? What's your concentration and, and do you have any plans for after graduation? Yeah, so I'm an environmental engineering uh, concentrator and I'm going to be working in Diamond Bar um, with Niagara Bottling doing their personal development program in sustainability. And where is that? Uh, it, it's a little bit inland in of LA. Okay, that's great. Um, so you talked earlier about how most of your teammates are from the California area, and that's because, quite frankly, there's not a lot of high school water polo throughout the country. It's very big in your state. I think Texas also, they play some. Is that accurate to say? I'm not sure, but I, I, I think most of the recruiting by coaches like Felix and those colleges that have water polo programs is out in California. Is that correct? Yeah, I think you can't just really beat California's, like, Everyone has access to an outdoor pool um, year round. Like there's no like you don't have to like empty the pool in the winter or anything like that. Um, so it's pretty much just access. Um, the beach is there. So a lot of people just learn how to swim for safety and it grows into something more. Um, but yeah. So like I played water polo, a complete novice, by the way, <laughs> just just so you know. But I swam competitively at a swim club every summer growing up as a kid. And one of the things we did for recreational purposes was play water polo. But it's a little bit more serious out west. Like I said, there are high school programs, correct? Whereas yeah. you don't find that here in the East Coast. There's also, I know, I can't speak for myself. I started a little bit late, but some girls on our team have been playing since they were 9 or 10 years old. Yeah. So you, if you're in the know with water polo and with swim, you start really young and you're just, you keep doing it. When did you start playing water polo? Uh, I started the summer before I went into um, high school. Okay. So a little later. Okay, so if you weren't, playing water polo would you be playing another sport and if so what would that sport be see I tried every sport known to man I think um, I was not athletic on land I'm very clumsy I had a lot of injuries the last straw I was uh, I broke my own ankle playing basketball <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, my my dad and my mom were like you should try something a little bit l low impact so they got me in to do a, comp a competitive swim camp and it's been water polo ever since <laughs> kind of tough to get hurt in the pool right <laughs> uh, so let me ask you this question you're winding up your careers here at Brown University. Are there any particular memories or a certain memory that stands out above the rest? Um, I think I have a few. I think our freshman year when we beat Marist during our senior game, that was really exciting because we lost to them previously. Also, our recent win to, like against Harvard is something I'll definitely always remember. Marley, how about you? 
Um, yeah, definitely that Harvard win. Um, I don't think we've beat them in probably the past five or six years. Um, so that was really exciting for all of us just because um, there's no, like, Ivy League for water polo because only us, Princeton, and Harvard have teams. Right. So it's still fun to be able to have a little bit of, like, an Ivy League rivalry. Um, so, so those are exciting games to win. Dagmara, do you have any particular memories that stand out over your four years here? I do have to say we had two big wins th so far this season against U of Pacific, which was a huge win, big upset, and also with Harvard. I just think our team was just so beyond happy to get those victories, and I think it really helps motivate us for the rest of the season. All right, what's your favorite spot on campus? Like to eat or to no, study? No, just favorite spot to hang out, whatever. Um, Probably main green on like that first – usually like late March, early April, like 60 something day of the year. And everyone's like so excited to see the sun, to be warm finally. Um, and I think the vibes on Main Green during those types of days are just like unbeatable. How about you, Katie? Um, similar to Marley, I really like the quiet green right at sunset. I mm -hmm. feel like that's a really that's nice a spot one. on campus. Dagmara? I'm a huge advocate of the Sci-Li. I love the view. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, I know it's not a it's not on campus, but I really like Prospect Terrace at sunset. Okay. Uh, how about favorite go-to spot on Thayer Street? Um, I have to say Pokey Works. I am an Eastside Pockets girl through and through. Okay. Um, probably BGO. What are you going to miss most about Brown? I will miss being in like a one mile radius of all my friends, definitely. Um, and just the culture that Brown has cultivated. What you, Marley? Um, I think similar. I'm going to miss um, being so close to like all of my closest friends. Um, I think I'm also just going to miss kind of like the college environment, like learning and like learning with your best friends and just all that fun stuff. For the best years of your life, yeah. you'll, you'll always remember that. What about you? What will you miss the most? Same thing, just the community that we've built and also the community of aquatics as well. I think that this is the best team and, and friendships that I've had throughout my whole life, so I, it's going to be really sad to leave this little brown bubble we have. Well, you still have a lot of season left. Good luck in your remaining games this season, and thanks so much for joining us on the show. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Thank you so much. All right, it's our women's water polo program, Dagmara Chaika. Did I get that right? Yes. <laughs> Katie Klein mm -hmm. and Marley Preciado. Mm -hmm. Did I get that right yes. again? Okay, that's it. We're going to wrap up the show. Thanks to all of you for joining us. My name is Scott Kredishi. Have a great evening, everybody.